not conform to the pattern of this world. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. Colossians this morning. I'm excited because this is our side lights too, if you don't mind there, brother. Uh, this is our first uh, sermon series that we've ever done, ever. And uh, I'm excited about it. And I think by the time we get through this morning, uh, you guys will be excited about it. We're going to be teaching on this subject for oh, probably three to four weeks. And I'm going to try to get through before Easter hits, before we have Resurrection Sunday. So I'm going to try to be through with that before then, and um, we're going to do our best. But let's go to the book of Galatians chapter 2 and verse 8. And if you haven't, say praise the Lord. How about the rest of you? Somebody say praise the Lord. All right. <laughs> Beware lest any man spool you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Do you see that? He said, Beware lest any man spool you through philosophy, vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. And everyone say amen. amen. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this anointing this morning, the people of God that's here. I ask you right now to let my mind be clear. I ask you to let my thoughts just flow this morning. I ask you to anoint me in the Holy Ghost. I, I pray that this word would come alive into our hearts this morning. I ask you right now to open the heart of your people. Let them receive this word. Let this word be anointed. God, let it be a rhema word to speak to the heart of your people. In Jesus' name we pray and every believer say amen. You may be seated here in the presence of the Lord. The Apostle Paul gives us a strong word when he says beware. If you break that word down, it means to be at war. Or to be on guard. And he tells you what to be on guard against. He said, lest any man spoil you through philosophy. Now he's writing this to the Christian church. That we are to be on guard against philosophy that would spoil us and take us away from what Christ has given to us in our life. Someone say amen to that. I want you to hear this this morning. This is really important. And this is the first screen, sister. Every person has a philosophy. Every one of us this morning has a philosophy. The second thing I want you to know is that every philosophy brings forth fruit. All right? So every person in here has a philosophy. The second thing I want you to know is that every philosophy, it brings forth fruit. Now here's the definition of philosophy, because this is really important. It is the lens through which you view the world and you make decisions. It is the lens by which you look through and you make decisions, and it's how you see things. That's what philosophy is. It's like, it's like if you, you put these glasses on. These glasses are philosophy. And this is how you view things. This is how you see things. And every person in here this morning has a philosophy. Now here's how you get your philosophy. It comes from your beliefs, your values, and your ideals. Right. What you believe is what forms your philosophy. Stay with me. The things that you value, that's what forms your philosophy. The things that are important in your life, the things that you believe, 
That is what forms your philosophy. Now here's the question. I want you to hear this. Is where did you get your philosophy? Where did you get what you believe? And that's important. Because there are things that are trying to come into our life to take us away from the Word of God, get us to see things that aren't in alignment with the Word of God, and you got people who come to church every day and they, they have their own set of philosophies. They have their own set of beliefs. And they look at, they look at things through their own lens. And I'm going to tell you, there are some people, I'm just telling you, that they are so stubborn, if I can say it like this, that it doesn't matter what the Word says, they're going to stick with how they see things. Right. Now you've got to ask the question this morning. What made you believe what you believe? Why do you believe what you believe? Where did you get your set of values? Where did you get the philosophy that you live by? I know I just sit here and I could ask you things. You said, well, this is what I believe. This is how I feel about it. That's your philosophy. Right. And that is how you're going to live your life by. That's how you see things. That's how you view things. Are you hearing me? And the Apostle Paul is telling the New Testament church that we got to be on guard. Right. Because if you get wrong philosophy in your heart and in your mind, you're going to see everything wrong and you're going to be out of the will of God and out of alignment with the Word of God. Someone say amen to that. Give him a shout of praise on that. Mm, someone say amen. Philosophy is the filter in which you view the world. Right. It's, it's this. I ain't going to try hers on yet. It is the lens by which you see everything. You view everything in the world, the church, your life. You, you view it by this filter, this philosophy that was... Created by your beliefs, your values. I mean, everything in your life, you, you look through it through this filter. And, and here's my question. Is what happens if you have the wrong philosophy? I, I know you got to believe, but what happens if what you believe ain't right? What happens, I know you got a good argument and you can tell me everything you believe, but... Just pull to the. What happens if what you believe ain't right? That's right. And then we get to the end of this thing, and you hear the Lord say, "Depart from me, you worker of iniquity." I never knew you. And the problem is, is that you let something, somebody, create a philosophy on how you see things and how you value things that's not in alignment with the Word of God. Right. And we need, oh, Holy Ghost. What, what I know that God is calling us to as a church is that we got to rewire our thinking. We got to rewire our values. Right. We got to rewire what we believe and get it in alignment with the Word of God. Yeah. Right. Hello, somebody. Are you hearing what I'm saying? See, wrong philosophy will cause you to have the wrong response to things, the wrong response to circumstances. You'll look at something with the wrong lens. You're looking at it wrong. You can't see it right because of what you believe, what you value. Your philosophy's wrong. And here's the problem is most people won't re realize that they got the wrong philosophy until they get to the end of their life. Till they stand before the Lord and they realize, oh God, I didn't see things right. I didn't believe the right thing. You may be sincere. You may be sold out on it. But that don't make it right. You may have 10,000 people who agree with you. But that don't make it right. you gotta, you got to say, wait a minute. I need to be rewired by the Word of God. That I can see it like God sees it. That I can see it like God sees it. That I can see it like the Word of God declares it. Can I get a witness in the house? Amen. The next screen, sister. As a Christian, this is so important. As a Christian, 
Your philosophy must come from the Word of God. Your belief and your values must come from the Word of God. This is our lens by which we look at everything through. The Word of God. The Word of God is going to tell you what's right and what's wrong. The Word of God tells us how to live and how not to live. I don't care what the world says. I don't care what the education system says. I don't even care how we feel about it. God's Word is the lens by which every Christian has got to look through. This is how we look. That's why in this pandemic that's going on, we're screaming out, don't be in fear. You say, well, how can that be? And on the news channel, everywhere I turn, they tell us to be afraid. But when I look through the lens of the Word of God, He says, fear not. Amen. When I look through the Word... When I look through the lens of the Word of God, there's never a hopeless situation. When I look through the lens of the Word of God, I find victory. I find healing. I find deliverance. I find joy. I... So this morning, if you're plagued with fear and worry, you're looking through things through the wrong lens. You're looking at it through the wrong lens. Somebody has put a belief system in you that's not in alignment with the Word of God. And many people won't even realize that they're looking through the wrong lens until they get to the end of life and they stand before the Lord. And I've come with the Word from the Holy Ghost that God wants to rewire your thinking. He wants to rewire our thinking that we can get in alignment with the Word of God and start viewing everything through the lens of the Word of God. Someone say amen to that. When I say that a Christian's philosophy must come from the Word of God, that's bad news for people who don't believe the Bible is the Word of God. When I tell you that the only way, the right way to see things is through the Word of God, that's bad news for those who don't believe that the Bible is the Word of God. And, and I'm just telling you, we're living in an hour that the devil's doing everything he can to discredit the Word of God. Because that is the only real lens that you can put on in your life and see things properly. Right. Say, all right, well, what, what about marriage? What's the right definition about marriage? It depends on what lens you're looking through. Right. If you look through the lens of the world, you can marry a dog if you want to marry a dog. Can I come, come on, can I get a witness? I mean, you, you can marry a child, a man can marry a dog. But if you look through the Word of God... And you look through the lens of the Word of God, that's the only right way you're going to see biblical marriage, and it's between a husband and a wife. Now, you can say anything you want to say. The problem is, you're looking through it through the wrong lens. And God wants to get us rewired where we're looking at everything through the truth of the Word of God. Oh, I dare you to give God some praise on that. Fix and hit you. Get ready. Any philosophy that is not in alignment with the Word of God, it's wrong. It says we need to walk and live. Someone say amen to that. Now, if your philosophy is not built on the Word, word of God, your response is going to be wrong. Your conclusion is going to be wrong. And, and the Bible says in the book of Proverbs that there's a way that seems right unto man, but the end thereof is the ways of death. That there's a way that seems right, but the end of that leads to death. Right. Are you hearing me? And Paul warned every Christian in Colossians that we are to be at war. We're to be on guard against these philosophies that would come in and spool us. Right. That you got to be alert. Listen, everything that you read on the internet ain't true. Right. Everything that you hear on the news ain't true. Everything that you hear in the school system ain't true. Everything that you hear in college ain't true. They're trying to fit you with a lens. Oh, I'm getting ahead of myself. They are trying to fit this generation with a lens that wrong's not wrong, right ain't right. 
and they got a generation that's seeing things crazy. Boys don't even know they're boys. Girls don't even know they're girls. Can I tell you, the devil is a liar. We got to get back to the philosophy of the Word of God. Look through things through the lens of the Word of God. I'm going to tell you, get ready. God don't make no mistakes, God. God don't make no junk. Can I get, can I get a witness? He said that the devil is going to try to spoil you. He, the devil is going to try to spoil you. That word spoil means to take captive. It means to cheat. It means to fool you. Now, how's the devil going to try to take you captive? How's he going to try to steal from you? How's he going to try to cheat you? By philosophy. He's going to try to change how you view things. By your belief system. By your values. So he's going to come in and he's going to try to undermine the word of God. And get you to believe things that make sense. That feels good. That's socially acceptable. And what happens, it's not just the sinners. Here's the sad thing. Many churches are leaving the Word of God. We're trying to develop a new philosophy that, that feels good to the world, but it's not in alignment with the Word of God. Oh God, let Solid Rock Church stand firm on the Word of God. I dare you to stand and give God praise on this. I dare you to give God praise on this. Come on, say amen. You can be seated. See, the devil don't want you to look through the lens of the Word of God. He don't want you looking through the lens of the Word of God. He'll do anything in his power to change what you believe and get you believing something that's not even... The Bible don't even say it. Right. Isaiah said this, Woe to them that call evil good and good evil, and put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. He said, Woe unto them that call good evil. This is what Paul said. We've got to be a war at this. Right. you got to be on guard. Church, you got to be on guard. Right. That you don't get your lens changed by the philosophy of the world, and all of a sudden now, what God says evil, you say it's good. Right. And what God says is good, you now call it evil. You could, the Bible, Paul said, hey church, be, beware, be at war, be on guard. Because the devil's going to try to ruin you through philosophy. Right. Now, isn't that what happened to the Laodicean church? Because they, they made the statement. He said, uh, we're rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing. He said, man, here, here's how I see things. Let me, let me, let me put my glasses on. Oh, we're rich, increased with goods, and have need of nothing. But they was looking through the wrong lens. Right. They weren't seeing it the way God was seeing it. Right. And God said, wait a minute. You're poor, wretched, and blind. He said, anoint your eyes with eyesight that you can see properly. Right. Get the right glasses on. Look through the right lens. Right. That way you can see it like God sees it. Right. Come on, can I get a witness? The devil is doing everything he can to quit, to get us to quit looking at things in a godly way. To quit looking at things the way that God looks at things. And he and he's a fighting. He's fighting the word of God. He's a fighting the, the power of the word of God. And let me let me let me tell you this. He's trying to get us to move away from God and and, and, and develop a, a new philosophy, a new belief system. And and, and 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 can I tell you here's how he's doing this. I want you to hear this. Is it <clears throat> He starts questioning the Word of God. He starts questioning the Word of God. Is this right? Is this wrong? But what about this? And then he tries to get us in our intellectual mind, in our feelings. Well, I, can I tell you, you, 
You say, well, they love each other. Well, it, it feels good. It feels right. You can't look through the lens of that and have the right interpretation. You can't. No, it's moving you away from the Word of God. He wants you to become sympathetic through movies. Sure he does. Look, think, think for a moment. Look at all the things that the enemy is using to change what we believe. Using movies, sitcoms. You sit, you sit down in front of that. All, it's got to affect how you believe. You, you watch that all the time. It's going it's to affect your belief system. And you're going to start feeling sorry and all. Oh, they're funny and all. There, there ain't nothing wrong with that. Are you hearing me? And so the enemy has come in trying to change the lens on how we view things. And what's sad is many churches, they become deluded too. Because they're more concerned about the money and the crowd than they are to hear the Lord say, Well done, good and faithful servant. And as a church, we got we got to be on guard. We got to be at war. We got to be determined. And nothing going to take us away from the truth of God's word. If we shrink down to nothing, God so big, but we going to stay with the word of God. Oh, you better praise Him on that. You better praise Him on that. With the news. Man, they got people panicking and people don't even know the truth. More people dying over the flu than the coronavirus and you got people going crazy. Because they believe what the news says. There's people who don't even like Trump because they believe what the news says. The first pro-life pro president we've ever had. Defund Planned Parenthood. Put prayer back. Call National Day of Prayer. Listen, I don't care about that. If you're going to lift up the name of Jesus, I'm all about that. <laughs> but people don't care. They, 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 they don't even know the truth. Just because somebody puts it on YouTube don't make it right. When you hear things, I need to know, where'd you get that? how they know that? Is that facts or is that your opinion? Because I'm going to tell you something. If you don't like somebody, it's going to divorce, di distort the lens that you look through. Because you're going to be looking through a hateful lens. Come on. So everything you say about them is going to be from a, a hateful standpoint. Well, you've got to have enough discernment to say, wait a minute. Just because you're looking through a lens of hate, don't mean I'm going to look through a lens of hate. I'm going to stay in the Word of God. I want to see how God sees. What does God think about this? trying to help you. you got to be on guard against talk shows. you got to be on guard against the internet. Education. I'm just telling you, you. There are so much propaganda and we're going to deal with it next Sunday, Lord willing. But man, they're coming after our kids. Listen, they're trying to fit little Susan with a pair of glasses that's contrary to the Word of God. And we got parents that we, we don't even have a, a clue of what's going on. Right. And then they're coming home and I want to do this and I want to do that. And you fight hell in your home because, because the Spirit has not put a pair of glasses on them. Right. That they're looking at things that's not even alignment with the Word of God. You can give it to the spirit of the world if you want to, but if I'm a mama or I'm a daddy, I'm going to cry out on the name of Jesus. I'm going to put my foot down. If you want to be a drunk, you can be a drunk when you get a job and you can buy your own liquor. But as long as you sit at my table, you're going to be a young lady, you're going to be a young man, and you're going to come to the house of God. Got somebody praising God with me. Can I get a witness? Someone say amen. Next screen, sister. 
He's tried, listen, the enemy's tried to change your belief system. Why do you why do you think like you think? Why do you think it's not important for someone to get married? Why do you think it's all right for the same sex? Why what where where did you where did you get the belief you ain't got to be faithful? Where, where, where did that come from that you can be a sinner and still go to heaven? Where did, where did you... What formed your thinking? Where did you get that from? I pray in the name of Jesus that the Holy Ghost and the Word of God would rewire our thinking that we would get in alignment I need you to stand and give God praise. I'm not finished. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. He is trying to change our belief system, our ideals, our values, our philosophies. He's trying to put a new pair of glasses on us that we don't see the way God sees it. But I declare in the name of Jesus that the devil is a liar. You can be seated. You can be seated. Woo, somebody say glory. Is this good stuff? I said, is this good stuff? Come on, if it's good stuff, give God a shout. Once, once the enemy gets you fitted with a pair of glasses, it's hard to get people out of that point of view. It's hard. Because anything that comes in trying to pull them jokers off, you fight it. People fight it. People fight it. And you can show them in the scripture and they still fight it. Man, that, 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 that ain't how I see it. Well, you keep your old distorted glasses on if you want. I wish to the Lord I could tell you that it's just the world that's trying to change the philosophy. But he said, beware lest any man. And everyone that's behind the pulpit ain't underneath the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. I, I wish I could tell you, I wish I could tell you that was that every preacher was preaching out of the Word of God. But you see churches voting in things right now that the Bible is very clear about. That this is wrong and it's sin and churches won't change it. Because they starting to look through the wrong lens. Hello somebody. Where did, where did you get the ideal let me just say it this way. Where did Christians get the ideal that they don't have to be faithful to the house of God anymore? Now, I, I, I love to, I say love, that probably ain't, that's too strong of a word. I like on occasions to listen to, to Stephen. I'm going to leave it there. You can put whoever you want in there. There's a lot of Stephens in the world. But I am not for at all the promotion of of an e-family where you stay at home and you have church and then you send your tithe into their church. And you just get a little group and you sit in your living room and have have fellowship. And, have, and you said, the devil is a lie. Listen, when you get sick, you think you will call them and have them come pray with you? You think he's going to fly down and do your funeral? No, oh, you need a local church staff. Listen, you can't listen. People who's tuning in this morning, they can't get what we get being in this house. Well, I thought I'd get a witness on that. You can't get at home what you can get by being here. They're trying to change the philosophy. You got people who don't believe you got to read the Bible anymore. Where'd you get that? When it's like trying to, it's like baking a cake and not having a recipe. Say, well, I'm just going to do what I want to do and I'm going to bake a cake. You ain't going to bake no cake like that. you got to follow the recipe to bake a cake. Right. And the Word of God teaches us as newborn babes is a desire, the sincere milk of How are you going to know if I'm preaching the truth if you ain't even in your Bible? 
How do you know I'm preaching the truth? How do you know that's in the Bible? Right. How do you know? Unless you got you a Bible and you read in the Word of God. Yeah. Come on, can I get a witness? Uh, it's getting quiet and I'm coming to an end. Look, well, let, 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 let me help you. The love of God never rebukes. If you're in the love of God, you won't ever rebuke nobody. Can you show me that in the Bible? Come on, somebody. Show me in the Bible where love never rebukes. And yet you got churches and people putting on these lids, look at them and say, well, this really love. Every time I go to church, I'm going to feel good. He ain't going to step on my toes. Can you show me that in the Bible? Well, I think when we go to church, we ought to always feel good. Can you show me that scripture in the Bible? Right. You're looking through a lens that ain't in alignment with the Word of God. Right. Come on, somebody. Don't get quiet on me when I'm preaching good. Look, love, the love of God never disagrees with anybody. Oh, boy. I'm not even sick, but I may throw up this morning on this stuff. Love of God will make, never make you feel bad. Despise not the chastening of the Lord. For every son he receiveth, he chasteneth. Well, I don't know if you know what chasteneth means, but back in the day it meant a butt whooping. Can I say that over the pulpit? It meant an old-fashioned whooping that God will. And he ain't doing it because he's mad. He's doing it because he loves you. He's wanting you to learn. You can't have that live. You can't live like that. You no! Oh, can I get a witness? I'm finished with this. A Christian philosophy must always come from the Word of God. Our philosophy must be in alignment with the Word of God. Any philosophy not in alignment with the Word of God is a wrong philosophy. Timothy said this, Study show thyself approved unto God a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the Word of truth. Listen to me. You have got to become a student of the Word of God. Don't tell me what you believe. Take me to the scripture and show me. Take me to the scripture. Well, it says that in the Bible. No, you show me. You need to know your Bible so well. You can say Romans chapter 1 verse 6 says. Well, I don't believe you got to be baptized. I don't believe in that. I don't believe you, you. You what? Show me that in the Bible. Give me book, chapter, and verse. You need to become a student of the word. Listen. Church, as loud as I can say it, you've got to become a student of the Word of God. Yes. You've got to read your Bible yes. to make sure you're viewing things like God wants you to see them. Right. And don't trust nobody. Amen. Right. To set your pair of lens on your eyes without checking it. I want to make sure this comes from the Word of God. You're going to put this on me. I want to know what's from God. It's got quiet up in here this morning. Hello, somebody. You need to know where to find it in the Bible. Don't just listen to preachers. You need to know where to find it in the Bible. You got to base your thinking on the Word of God. Right and wrong must be decided by the Word of God. Come on, can I get a witness? I mean, you, you hear it all the time. Well, it's a new time. Uh, this this 2020. Times have changed. <laughs> He's the everlasting God. Right. Yeah. He's the end from the beginning. Yeah. His truth endures from generation to generation. Yeah. When he spoke the word of God, he had wisdom for every generation. Yeah. His word is just as good today as it was the first day it was written. It may not fit in with the world. It may not fit in with the religious system. But I give you a word. It's going to fit in with the bride of Christ. And those who's going to be resurrected. Stand to your feet. I'm finished. And give God some praise on this Sunday morning. Oh, hallelujah. How many of you begin to make your way around the altar here with Pastor this morning? Because I want to pray. 
I got a prayer that I want to pray over us this morning. Oh, I, I, I want to preach the next message so bad. But I'm going to tell you, I'm not going to let nobody fit my kids with a pair of glasses. Except me and the Word of God. I'm going to want, I want to know what you're putting on them. I want to know what are you putting on them. Disney's coming after them. Disney's coming after them. Let's pray together. Lord, let our mind be rewired by the Word of God. Come on, ask God that. Let my mind be rewired by the Word of God. Glory to God. Let my mind be rewired by the Holy Ghost. Come on, ask God that. Lord, let my mind be rewired by the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Mm, Hallelujah. Let me see things the way you see them. Come on, ask God that. Lord, help me to see things the way you see them. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Deliver me from the philosophy of the world. Reach out to God and ask God, deliver me from the philosophy of the world. Rewire my mind with the Word of God. Rewire my belief system with the Word of God. Anybody reaching out to God here this morning? Deliver me from the philosophy of religion. Pray that with me. God, deliver me from the philosophy of religion. I don't want the tradition of men, amen, to be the lens that I look through. I want it to be the Word of God. Say this with me. I declare the mind of Christ is in me now. I declare the mind of Christ is in me now. Say it with me. I declare that the understanding of the Spirit is in me now. Wisdom of the Spirit to be governed my mind now. In Jesus' name I pray. And every believer say amen. Come on, give God some praise on this Sunday morning. Hallelujah. 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 Do you realize that I'm through, I've preached and we prayed, we're going home. But if we can get our lens changed and start seeing our marriage in, in accordance with God's Word, how a man is supposed to treat his wife in accordance to the Word of God, how we're supposed to raise our children, that a lot of the chaos going on will die in a stop. Why? Because when we do it God's way, God's way is right every time. Huh? God's ways right every time. His word leads us to peace. His word leads us to joy. Can I get a witness in the house? Oh, Father, I thank you this morning. I pray that this word would be just put deep down into our hearts and our spirits. I ask you, Lord, to to just let us leave here this morning. Let us begin to question our beliefs and begin to question the philosophy that we live by. Let us to get in the Word of God. Help us to dig in the Word of God. Help us to open our Bible again. God, let your Word be a lamp unto our feet. We honor you this morning. We give you praise. We thank you for this house. We thank you for healing this morning. We thank you for the leadership over this country this morning. We thank you for the prayers that you heard this morning. We thank you for a praying nation this morning. We thank you for victory this morning. Through the power of Jesus' name. Come on, give God some praise for some victory. Give God some praise.